my colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to dismiss the concerns that we are putting forth about what's happened with respect to targeting school boards. I understand why they want to do that, because they certainly don't want to talk about school boards, because the American people are waking up to the blatant attack on the rights of parents going on currently in schools across the country. There are signs dotting uh, Northern Virginia right now, right, because the race is going on. There's a sign I drove by this morning. It says, keep parents out of classrooms. Keep parents out of classrooms. That's the story. Mm -hmm. And that's the story that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle do not want to address. Because they know full well the American people are absolutely sick and tired of having politicians get in and start teaching their kids that America is evil and go into the classroom and go into the school boards and take over the schools and hide it from parents. But the one upside of this disastrous virus is that the veil has been lifted on a corrupt school system that has been undermining our American children for generations. And my colleagues on the other side of the aisle know it. The campaign's going on in Virginia and New Jersey. The campaigns know it and they're running away from it and they're seeing the disaster that has unfolded with the Attorney General of the United States targeting a father, a father defending his little girl who was raped in a bathroom. That's the truth. That's the reality. And we're bringing it up here in the context of a bill, another bill by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, targeting Americans, targeting our Second Amendment rights and our ability to defend ourselves against tyranny. And then my colleagues say, well, why do we need to talk about that here? Well, you tell me. You tell me whether I should trust the Department of Justice not to go after Scott Smith and to go after Scott Smith and take away any firearms he might have. Yeah, good point. You tell me whether Scott Smith wouldn't be exhibit A of the kind of citizen in this country who would be targeted by an attorney general that's now got his U.S. Attorney's Office putting out 13 crimes to go after parents and to go after and target people in school boards when Mr. Smith was bloodied and arrested in a school board meeting for simply going forward and trying to defend his daughter after the very school board in question lied, lied and covered up a rape of his daughter on May 28th in a bathroom in a high school when she's in the ninth grade in Loudoun County, Virginia. They covered it up, they hid it, and then what happened just a few weeks ago at Broad Run High School, just a few miles down the road, but another young girl was assaulted by the same boy. That's what occurred. But my colleagues on the other side of the aisle don't want to talk about that. What they want to talk about is using the power of government, using the power of government to walk into people's houses and take away their ability to defend themselves. And they want to hide behind, oh, we're going to provide due process. But don't mind the fact that that due process occurs, supposed due process, fake due process, that occurs after their rights have been stripped away, after the power of government has come into their homes and taken away their firearms. That's the actual truth. I listen to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle talking about, you know, oh, well, we have a right to be free from fear. We have a right to be free from violence. No, there is a duty in the Constitution for us to secure the blessings of liberty. We have a duty in government to protect the citizenry. One way to do that, by the way, is not to defund the police. One way to do that is to actually stand behind law enforcement so that we can have secure communities, as our constituents expect us to do. One way to do that is to ensure that the citizens are in fact able to arm themselves and defend themselves when government abandons them. Abandon them, abandons them just as they are right now on the southern border of the United States, where cartels have operational control of our border, where people are pouring into Texas, fentanyl is pouring into Texas, danger on our streets, people dying from fentanyl overdoses. And then we have people dying across this country because we have gangs and violence increasing and murder rates skyrocketing. Why? What would the correlation be? Is it because we need to have some sort of red flag law to go after an American citizen's rights to defend themselves? Or could it be that we've abandoned any concept of what justice should actually look like in this country where we can actually have security in our streets rather than pulling cops off the streets as they did in Austin, Texas, and we watch the murder rate skyrocket? There is a correlation here. We are talking about rights, and we know full well that the same people that would go after our gun rights would target Scott Smith because he dared to speak up at a school board in Loudoun County, Virginia. I yield back. Gentlemen, yields back.